for there. All right, family, it's your brother Assad, and I am back again with another quick video. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notifications bell so that you'll be notified when we drop new material on this channel. Secondly, in terms of housekeeping, we got to give a special and a significant and a particular and a peculiar and a powerful love and shout out to our South African family for all the love they have shown this family, uh, shown this channel, my wife, my, my kids, my family, we greatly appreciate it. Third, in terms of uh, housekeeping KZN, stand up. So now that we have gotten that out the way, we have a special guest on now, and then we have another special guest coming on. So this brother, I met this brother in December of 2021 in South Africa uh, <laughs> after one of our uh, mutual friends said, Hey, uh, I'm coming to South Africa, and he was unable to make. Unfortunately, he was unable, unable to make it that time. He was like, "But well, I need you to link up with this brother." So, we linked up in SA in 2021 December, and today, not yesterday, not five days ago, today he just returned back, got off the plane, and I said, "Man, let's get you on so we could talk about this new SA experience." Man, this brother is a a businessman, he is a husband, he is a father, and he is a future SA property owner and soon to be future um, resident in South Africa. Y'all give it up for brother Joshua. I, I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel you like- uh, in, Man, you brought me in. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Arsenio Hall. Y'all give it up for brother Joshua. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, wow. Wow, man, it's a pleasure to be on here, my brother. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm with family every time I'm talking to you and uh, that I'm a part of the South African family because you always bring them in and you make it feel like, hey, well, this is just so natural and it's always been there. So thank you for having me and everybody in South Africa who I've had an opportunity to meet and know that who I have not. Like, like Asad says, we're sending that particular and special kind of love. I want to steal some of that. I can't say it the way he says it, but I'm going to steal some of it. Definitely. So Josh, so let me ask you this, man. South Africa, right? And 20, so 2021 was your first time. What, what made you say, I want to go to South Africa, you know? Wow. That, that's a question that I get every time I, I tell anyone about our journey to getting here, it's been four and a half years uh, of us trying to uh, look at how we could possibly make this transition. And then uh, I have to say, Mark Gladden, uh, who we know from the Real South Africa, really, really uh, sparked my interest uh, and uh, kind of made it known to me that it was a possibility. Uh, at first, it was just a conversation, right? Oh, I want to go to Africa one day. But then when I was scrolling through and I saw Mark Gladden back in 2019, I said, this guy's doing what we've talked about. And my wife would say, well, let's check it out. So I have to give, I have to give him that credit. I've never met Mark face to face, but we've talked on the phone, he and, uh, he and his wife. But uh, we just felt like we wanted to connect with the motherland. We didn't know that South Africa would be the place. And I think a lot of people start out that way. They hear about all these different places and, you know, and Mark did such a good job of, of painting a picture uh, so bright and it just seemed like somewhere I had to see, I had to get there, but I had to plan it out, right? <laughs> so that's how we end up going in December uh, in 2021. Man, you know what? I, hey, you, you mentioned uh, uh, the real South Africa and the Blantons, man. They play mm -hmm. such a pivotal, pivotal role in mm -hmm. uh, our transition because we had gone prior to even discovering their YouTube channel, but we were fiending so hard once we got back we were just looking at any trying to soak up any south african information that we could find especially during 2020 when they you know you couldn't move you couldn't go anywhere so uh and and their channel was such a uh you know a great reward to to see it and like i said man like you were saying i should say he is selling essay he is selling essay uh, he and uh, Dr. Bland are both selling essay in a very um, appealing way to Black Americans. They know what we are looking for. You know, sometimes I've seen I've seen some um, uh, YouTubers and 
they've put together pieces and I'm like, well, I can tell that you don't know what the American, the black American eye is, is keen. Exactly. To see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely shout out. So, um, you said four years. So tell me about this four. Why did it take y'all four years to get there? <laughs> well, you know, we, we had a baby during COVID. We got pregnant right as COVID began. It was, it was really, uh, you know, a kind of, um, difficult time. We didn't know what COVID was, how bad it was. You know, I'm in the medical sales profession. My wife is a nurse. She's in the medical hospital, hospitality section. And, uh, you know, we really didn't go out much, but we still had to, you know, pay our bills, do everything that, you know, people here do and everywhere in the world to, to prepare and, and take care of their family. So uh, that kind of got shelved a little bit. So um, we said, hey, as soon as the baby is born, you know, we'll go. And of course that, that came with, well, now the grandparents can't come because we gotta be careful with the COVID restrictions. So we, we had the baby the first year pretty much by ourselves, which stopped any travel, you know, opportunities, no grandparents, no help, you know, mom was working from home. I'm still in the, in the field taking care of doctors. So there was really no way for me to uh, get them on a plane, let alone, you know, try to, you know, take them anywhere out of the country with all of this going on. I'm just being honest with you. I wouldn't have done it anyway. Uh, it was just too risky when we didn't know enough. And um, of course, with all the mis misconceptions and all of the misinformation with COVID, you kind of felt a little bit like I need to hold off as long as I possibly could. But as soon as that restriction <laughs> was lifted, I was like, yeah, all planes are ready to go. I was ready, bro. Yeah, definitely, man. I know. I know 2020 was hard for us, bro, to sit still. <laughs> we were going... Our family was kind of traveling different places every every summer. We would go somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to sit down for 2020 after we had been bitten with this South African bug, man, we got there. And Josh, we've been a few places, but no yeah. place made me say, man, I want to live here. I want to be here. No. And no. when I got to Josie, I was like, I want to live here. I want to be here. And then COVID hit. I was like, all weapons formed against me will <laughs> have are prospering. What, <laughs> yeah. what is going on, yeah. man? So yeah. yeah, it was it was some wacky stuff. So um all right, so finally you 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 y'all, you know, COVID is out the way, you booked the plane tickets. Uh uh where did you go first? Where did you go? So First, we went to Johannesburg, and we didn't actually go into Johannesburg proper. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the people that because I'm a little embarrassed that I didn't spend much time in Johannesburg. We spent time in Four Ways, in Santon, uh, in that area because you know that's where we were staying. We didn't we didn't really know a lot of people there. Of course, we were meeting Doctor Bennett and uh, his wife, Doctor Bennett, and we they had taken kind of taken us under their wings like hey we're gonna go with you when you go god bless him he's just the minute he got back from south africa the first time we met online that brother called me at 9 30 at night and said when are you going and i said well i'm going on this date in december he said all right i'm gonna book my ticket and i'm going with you now how's that you know that's when somebody got some money huh <laughs> he saying, got some money you know, what like, like you got you got some on the ticket too <laughs> But uh, I was just so, I mean, I, the conversation just felt so good to talk to someone who you could truly feel was genuine and just, you know, it was the spirit was just right. Same as I feel about you when I listen to you talking, I, I joke about you like that passion, but you could hear it in Doc's voice uh, when he called me the first time, like, brother, you got to get there. When are you going? Give me the dates. We're all going back. So yeah. we were on our way back in December of 2021 on the 27th and we all had to get COVID tested. Remember at that time we had to get COVID tested before we got on that plane. He and all his family got COVID, I mean, uh, got COVID tested and one of his daughters came up positive. Yeah. You remember you had to get tested 72 hours before you get on that plane. Yeah. So he couldn't leave one family member behind. I'm with him, like stay with her. You can, I, and she was crying. I told her, hey, we will get together soon. Don't you worry. We're gonna go on over here. So we thought we'd had Dr. Bennett with us, <laughs> but <laughs> now it's just me and my wife and the baby alone on this journey because we don't have kind of a guy. We don't have yeah. a backup. We, you, you remember, I had yeah. not met you yet. Right, thank right, you. right. Thank the Lord. 
I met you on the trip the very, I think that was the second day I was there. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Second day I was there. So uh, yeah, we stayed in that area a lot for uh, most of our duration in, in Johannesburg proper, but not in Johannesburg. We were there four days and then we flew out to Cape Town. So we were in Cape Town five days. All right. So, so what was your first thoughts, your impressions, impressions of Johannesburg when you when you arrived? I know. I, yeah. So, I, I asked that question because we know the. Uh, I guess you had been watching the real South Africa, so you probably mm-hmm. understood that it wasn't what we had been used to. But okay. when you actually get there and see, like, dang, this is this is <laughs> something else. So, so how, how did that, yeah. that? Tell me about that moment. How did that feel? Oh man, it's just, it was just uh, unimaginable. I, I, I just, when, as I rode from the airport to our hotel and I looked around, I was like, I was not expecting this. And we had a driver who James had set us up with, who drove us to a, a really nice scenic route to kind of give you some, uh, here's this part of the city, here's this. I was like, this reminds me a lot of some really nice places in America. <laughs> like, yeah. This is, very modern and my wife was like wow so it was it was I can't say enough about how beautiful the landscaping was and just the modernization of buildings and the Stanton and forwards I was like this is better than you know I live in Dallas Texas and I have to tell people in Stanton all the time now that I'm there and talking to people on my second visit like you guys have some awesome design structures you yeah. don't see this in modern yeah. America, you know. Yeah. And so you know, it, it it I was kind of throttled a little bit by that. I'm gonna tell you what else SA has: interior design. It's Same like man with the school for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like God dog. Some of this stuff. Yeah. That, what, what's the word? The feng shui is right. off the chain. Yeah, yeah. like yes. That, oh, my, my wife said. Well, did I say that wrong, baby? I said feng shui wrong. Feng shui. <laughs> I don't know. She's she's over there. Uh, for those who are wondering, we are in a hotel uh, family because we homeless. Yeah, we homeless. <laughs> we homeless, and I got COVID, so I keep uh, muting myself to 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 cough a little bit, and you will hear my children in the background coughing. We have a whole bunch of sick people over here right now, but that's all right. But yeah. um, but yeah, the 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 the, the layout there. Are, uh, Airbnbs that we have stayed in in Johannesburg mm-hmm. that are so properly laid out with mm-hmm. color schemes exactly. and the accent pieces on the wall to match, you know, the the palette of the car. It's it's just very you can tell detail this, oriented. Detail very oriented. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could see you know black folk like myself. You know, I've been to pick up something that my mama gave me. I like this chair from Craigslist or something mm-hmm. like that. Throw something together. Nah, they. It is very professionally done. It, I, I, I like that. I, I like that about SA a lot. So, yes. um, so you know what I got to ask about because I got fat boy tendencies, man. <laughs> Tell me about that food, man. Tell me about that food when you first got. Oh there. man, you know, uh, of course, my wife used to be a, a bodybuilder comp- competitor. Fitness, oh, that's right. And she, I always tease her because I say you eat the rabbit food when you're home. You try to feed me that rabbit food, but I'm not going for it. <laughs> But uh, I can tell you both times we were there, we ate so well. I mean, everything was so amazing and so amazingly prepared. And, yeah. you know, it's just sometimes when you get your food, the first thing you want to do is pull out your camera. That's what I do. <laughs> and get a picture of it because yeah. you know that someone put their love their energy and time and and the time is something you you i definitely you're gonna i know you're gonna touch on this of how they prepare the food yeah it's like man every time i got ready to go eat with doc or someone it just felt like you couldn't wait to get there yeah. and it every moment the food and you thought about it, it's just it, it, it came it was right on time but it was always delicious Man, what I saw in this last trip, and we'll jump into the last, the, you know, the, the most recent trip uh, mm-hmm. uh, shortly. But what I saw were, were, you know, from the videos and the pictures, were, were, what I saw was you guys were doing what South Africans usually do, and that's get together in groups and eat. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now I'm not well, saying I'm expert. I'm saying again. 
you know, I call it covenants. Covenants, yeah. You know, I say, oh, we ain't having lunch. We're having covenants. Co- right, right, all right, all right. That's one of them church words. That's how yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I saw. I said, oh, this is this is what's happening naturally. Yeah. You know, I, I saw the, the picture with Asha and, and Greg and yeah. and your family. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, it's like this. My extended is- family, June, some of my high school friends and Okay. Listen, college friends. Yeah, brought their. Oh, phone. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you yeah. brought some folks to together because you both are in the legal fields, you know, and you know, and, and a lot of the conversation that you have with me sometimes just went off when we're just talking uh, things yeah. in the world that are going on, and in the, in the, especially in the country, y'all have the same kind of you know attitude about. I can't yeah. wait for you all to sit down and talk because I told you I've been waiting on that knowledge. I want to sit but, in that circle with you. <laughs> but well, what did you? Well, now you done brought these new people. What did they think? <sighs> Look, June, uh, we have a chat line uh, on our What's Out with Doc and Greg and June and I and, and Nicole and, and, and Patrice. Uh, June shares a lot of information that just about what she saw in Derb and uh, the people that she interacted with in, in um, uh, Johannesburg. June didn't even waste any time. She didn't hang out. She's like, boom, I'm hitting streets. June actually went and spent time in CBD Johannesburg. Her and her son walking around talking. I mean, June is a, she's a judge, but she's a really around the way type of girl, and she yeah. knows how to handle herself. And uh, yeah, she just talked about how beautiful the people were, how beautifully human, and just how kind everyone was. Yeah, and yeah. I know that person. I mean, that's one person I've known thirty plus years. I mean, she speaks from the heart. May not say a lot, but when she does, I try to listen. Yeah, so she was highly impressed. And she told us on the on the chat line today when she was getting on the airplane, I was getting ready to land in Dallas. Uh, she said, I'm already thinking about and dreading. And I know you heard this a lot of times, dreading going back to the US and thinking about when's my next trip. Yeah. So so now go back, let's repeat again. What is her profession? She's a judge. She's a judge. Mm -hmm. See, this is what I'm telling people. It is the people, first of all, it's it's, it's some layers there. She's a judge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a successful Black woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How much weight does uh, does being Black in the United States carry where a judge is a judge? This is the top Mm -hmm. of your profession. You really can't get higher than a judge in the legal field. Right. right. <laughs> so when a judge says I'm dreading going back to the United States, mm-hmm. that's a lot of pressure on black folk. Mm-hmm. And number two, it, it, it also serves to point uh, again, serves to, to, to bear witness to, to my point that there is a certain type of black per- person that is choosing S.A. Um, yeah. You know, a, a lot of my uh, real Afrocentric, earthy tree huggers. I love my tree huggers, right? Yeah. A lot yeah. of them may choose like the, the Ghana and stuff like that. But here again, it's high level professionals, medical mm-hmm. sales, medical doctor. Dr. Patrice is a medical doctor. Medical doctor. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Bennett is a dentist, right? We have high level, a judge, high mm-hmm. level black professionals Ashley, um, Ashley is an economist. I mean, there you, you know, go. Yeah. Y'all ran into Ashley. How was that? Great, man. And, and she's so pleasant, just as if she was on the video with you guys. I mean, even more so in person. And she just, 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 just fell into place. That's all I can say. The conversation was just seamless, fell into place. Man, and- listen, I watch her videos all the time. And I remember when she was in the U.S. Mm-hmm. and the, the energy from the videos mm-hmm. versus the energy from those videos that she has now. It's, exactly. It's- that weight is lifted, man. I'm yeah. sitting up here with all this weight on me, man. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you. Yeah, I mean, we're both on the same mission. You know, we want to we want to be our best when we get there. We want to we want to blend in because all those people are eating good and walking around thin all day long. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> How do y'all do it? Yeah, I try to be on my feet more in SA, and I, that was something that I made a point to do. And uh, so I took the baby walking several times. And I'll tell anybody who's going there, if they're going to stay in Santon, stay at one of the mall uh, facilities. And this is just my, this is just my, you know, opinion. Yeah. 
because of what I was trying to do, because I walked the mall, you know, the malls there are like, 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 I can't even yeah. explain how big the malls are. Uh, so, but for, for, for the ladies who like to go and window shop and occasionally spend some more of their money, yeah. the malls are great if you want to walk in the mornings and just get a, a mile or two out. You can do it in that mall. You can walk yeah. here floor and feel like I'm about to fall out. So I think I was losing weight just walking several times a day through the mall. And that yeah. never got old. Hey, um, did y'all stay in Rosebank? Stanton. Stanton, okay. So we, we stayed. We, okay, y'all stayed by Stanton Mall. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. We stay all the time we, when we go, we visit, we stay in, in, in Rosebank. And my mm -hmm. wife and I would get up and we would just walk up and down those, you know, because you realize Johannesburg is hilly, almost yeah. mountainous. So mm -hmm. all that coughing, please excuse my, my yeah. tongue. Yeah, no But um, uh, we would walk up and down those hills or walk down the hill and then walk back up this, you know, to send back up. And I mean, I'm telling you, you feel the difference in your lungs. You, your lungs have to make that mm -hmm. adjustment from mm -hmm. being in this Southern American climate to that higher altitude to really You're be right. able to, to make, yeah, so. But, uh, so the second time, what, what made you say I had to, you, you went in 2021 and that's just December. So we're not talking about like uh, yeah. uh, I, uh, I brought a year ago. Year, I brought in the New Year's with the SA family. I brought the New Year's in, in Cape Town on top yeah. of Table Mountain with them. <laughs> Look, man, I can't look. I don't any any person who's ever gone on the top of Table Mountain, whether he's you know South African or European or American, no matter where you're from, you have to admit that there's a presence there. There is a presence when you go that high up. Absolutely. And, you know, Absolutely. for someone who grew up in Mississippi and you know was where I was able to you know go to school, get an education, and be blessed enough to get a job and move around and you know have beautiful children and a beautiful wife and i'm just blessed when i got up there and i looked across the sky and i could see where the indian ocean or where the atlantic ocean you know me and i was thinking like man i can see the cape of good hope way over there and i yeah. and i'm just looking at the, the the ground looks like ants moving but it's such a beautiful puzzle with all these colors in it. and i was just thinking only god could, could create a canvas like this man like who could, you can, you can do so many things in your lifetime, but once you get up to, in the sky, 36,000 feet above the ground and you're looking down, it's just one of those defining moments when you say, yeah, I'm really close to, to heaven. And you know, this Let, is where I want to be. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, when you look at Table Mountain, it's like, you, you can be in the United States, you could be in just anywhere in the world and you can mm -hmm. look at all the troubles in the world. Oh, it's murder. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. rape, there's poverty, there's yeah. just crime, there's war. And you say, how can there be a God? And then you yeah. get up to the top of Table Mountain and you say, how can there not be a not God? Not be a God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always tell you, you have the most eloquent way of explaining things. And that is exactly what I was saying. And the lady beside me who was speaking French, I had no idea what she was saying. And I said, God is so good. And she, she looked at me and smiled. But I didn't yeah. understand what she was saying. But I knew. Yeah, I yeah, did. yeah. And um, yeah, man. Table Mount was absolutely breathtaking, man. Is 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 absolutely the definition of pict picturesque, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, so tell me, what do you find the differences between the Cape Town and the Johannesburg experience? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, it's Cape Town is definitely a little bit more colonial. It's beautiful and there's definitely, I say, a very noticeable difference in, in the stratification in that city, how, you know, uh, where the blacks are versus where the foreigners, I won't just say whites because I met people from New Zealand and we had a great conversation, young guy from New Zealand, been there 18 years, younger than me, started out young, started his business there when he finally got his citizenship and he's, he's from New Zealand, doc, and you know, and I, you, you, we always heard that was one of the most beautiful places. And he said, no, Cape Town is special. So first night there, he fed us, opened his store back up, fed us pretty much free. Wow. To us. Yeah, great, great guy, uh, you know, and uh, I did notice just that, you know, the foreigners had a really good, uh, I, I said their foundation was a little easier, you know, than some of the native South Africans. So 
you know, that was something I, I noticed first. I wanted to see us be a lot more of the shop and restaurant owners and the entrepreneurs and the forefront. Of course, we are, I'm, I'm sure, in the in the city and local government jobs. But, you know, that was one of the first things I noticed since you asked me. Uh, but also I noticed that, you know, when I went downtown and, and I stayed downtown in a high rise, and I rented from a, 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 a family who owned that, that par- apartment in the building. Uh, that uh, they had a lot of the same things we have, a lot of the same fast food restaurants, a lot of the same, you know, clothing stores or, you know, designer stuff. It was very much being like, I won't say Miami because it's more beautiful than Miami. Some people may call it, I heard a European say, oh, this is a lot like uh, uh, San Diego. Say, yeah. I've been to San Diego, but cleaner, but cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she was right. The air was good. And, you know, I suffer with, uh, for you all who don't know, you will know. I suffer with uh, chronic sinuses and allergies. <clears throat> I was fine there. Bre- I was breathing great. Uh, the air was clean. Uh, you didn't get the feeling there was a lot of pollution around. It was just clean. Uh, yeah. And even though, you know, I saw things that I was like, hmm, I wish it was different. The South African pride, brother. The people there, man, they were always positive, always. How can I help you, sir? What can I do for you? Where do you want to go today? What's on your agenda today? They weren't worried about, because you take that, that American thinking sometimes, which you're like, I don't like that. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be on vacation. Let me enjoy. But right. they kept me on the point. Like, you're here to enjoy this. What do you want to do? So right. that was that was kind of how I saw it. I'm, I'm thinking of a place, though, when you mentioned restaurants, there's a, uh, I don't know if it's still open, but it was called the Olympia Cafe, I believe, man. When we first went, we got a homegirl who's from Cape Town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, when you go go to this place, man. So next time you're in Cape Town, I think it's called Olympia. Check yeah. it out. My South African family, if, if I got the name right, they'll be in this uh in the um in the comments saying, yeah, it's it's, it's a good <laughs> hopefully yeah, it's still it. open. Hopefully it's still open. I know that COVID had a uh had this uh oh when we were in Cape Town, I think this is what kind of skewed also my perception of Cape mm-hmm. Town. Because we, I've been told several times that I thought it was majority white, and they're like, "Nah, it's still mm-hmm. definitely majority black." <laughs> no, <it's> but, very <laughs> yeah, but it's like where you were, they were like where you are aside when the touristy areas were, where you know where it's not, and um, it was during the water crisis, two thousand and nineteen. Yeah. They still had like, um, you know, a, take a, a take a two minute bath. And mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, man, what is this, man? <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah. I'm supposed yeah. to be in the shower for 30 minutes, man. Yeah, man. What, what dancing, A-ball? Dancing. Yeah, yeah. A-ball said I jumped into the shower for one hour. <laughs> I yeah. Was the shower yeah. For an hour. But yeah, so yeah, I think that's what kind of um part of the 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 turn that that not even say turn me off, because I, I really mm-hmm. liked Cape Town. Yeah. It was Josie though. Yeah. That's, Joseph, yeah, that's more. I think what Josie has over Cape Town, and trust me, I think you heard when you first talked to me that I was in, 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 totally infatuated with, with Cape Town. Like, that was that girl I just met, and she's fine. I got to, you know, see her, you know. And, and, and Joe Berg is a more, you know, that mature. You're like, hey, let me sit you down and talk to you, know a little bit about you. Cape Town's a little bit more, you know, fun and, and, and spirited. But I could have found that in Joburg had I spent enough time there. I just, this time I spent all my time in Joburg. Yeah. I didn't go anywhere else. And I realized Joburg's just as good, baby. It's, it's, it's flavor. <laughs> Joburg, Joburg is really like where I'm from, though. You know, I'm yeah. from Jackson, and it's a, it's a predominantly Black city. You know, we have a lot of Black leaders, a lot of Black professionals. People like to dress well in the South. I mean, even in New Orleans, you know, we come out yeah. now. Yeah. You come out. So I got to see a part of Joe Bird this time that I didn't get to see when I was just in four ways at Palazzo and I was just in that one area. Now I was in the city driving around, hit Victoria, hit four ways, hit Sandton, hit, you know, CBD. You know, I was hitting a uh, Parkview, Melrose, Melville. I was hitting mall. And that boy was- naming all them spots. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's what that's that's what you told me to do. You said get out there and learn the area, man. Look, my driver, uh, really nice guy. I, I talked about you a lot, so hopefully you'll get the chance to meet this guy, um, Abdi. And he said, "I'm gonna take you around so you can see." But I felt exactly what you kind of describe is that it is simply just. Josie just feels like a familiar place when you've yeah. never been there. Yeah. 
You know, and I think I think it's important. I, 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 I it just dawned on me. I, I know you always said you were from Mississippi. You always said you're from Jackson. Man, a good um, one of one of my best friends on planet Earth. He's from Jackson, man. Y'all, how old are you? How old are you, how old are you Josh? Forty-seven. Forty-seven. Mm-hmm. No, no, this brother is forty-three. So you might not know if you know any last name Nances out in uh, in Jackson. Can't say but, that I do. Can't say that I do. And his dad, I think his dad's a man or his dad's a Muslim, definitely for sure. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah. but I think you pointed out something that's important is that it is that Jackson, majority black city, that New Orleans, majority black city, that Atlanta, majority black yeah, city. Yeah. But what makes Josie so different is like it's a majority black city in a majority black country. Like it's really that feeling. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like mm-hmm. it's like taking um, because let's let's be frank. No matter what city I go into, if I go into Atlanta, if I go into Jackson, if I I can kind of understand the dynamics, the politics, exactly. because because it's majority black. I know majority what's black, going yeah. on. I mean, I know the the name of the gangsters, but I can point them point them out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and Josie, you get <laughs> that you, you 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 get that feeling, but it's it's like um, amplified in in it so is. many ways. It's yeah. like it's like I, you've I, been there before. It's, it's like you've yeah. been there before, even when you haven't been there. Exactly. You know, exactly. We know we, we you and I could gain street cred in a couple of days where it may take others <laughs> a couple of months if, if they were black and grew up in Minnesota. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to know code here. You <laughs> exactly. And you can yeah, feel it. Yeah. You can you can feel the soul. So mm-hmm. um, um, that's what, um, you know, places like Jackson. Mm-hmm. Ha- J- Jackson is the soul of Mississippi, and uh, along with the Delta, uh, and that's what uh, Johannesburg. You feel soul there. You feel, and I used to always say that man, soul is an expression of a deep level that 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 actually comes from uh, a deep level of generational trauma that produces the blues, and then the blues produces this type of soulful music. And that's another reason why we have this commonality with South Africans. They've experienced a very similar type of trauma as it relates to apartheid. And there was, yeah. uh, uh, you know, those coal miners, uh, the, 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 mm-hmm. I don't know, not coal miners, but mm-hmm. miners and, and, and that, that whole situation right there. So mm-hmm. that's why I think there's such a common, it's, it's a level of soul that our South African family has that we can really tap into. It's, it's something intangible, you know? Man. And I was thinking about just using the word South Africa as it has to do with you and I being from the deep South, south of America. Yeah. You were hitting on something. I thought you was going to take the turn on down that road because you're so good. <laughs> you're really taking the conversation to a place and dissecting it. And you're probably going to go further with this. So I'm going to say this. He said Mississippi, Tennessee, you know, the, the Louisiana, the, the southern part of the country is who a lot of times I feel like feels what you're saying when you talk mm-hmm. about Jober or South Africans or even just trip going to Africa. Right. And I'm going to say that because you mentioned in that conversation, the blues and, you know, the old song before you and I was born about the blues is this and that and the blues and why America loves the blues and the atmosphere of the blues because they provide the atmosphere for blues being blues being, you know, sadness, depression, you know, and, and we found a way to turn it around our music to, 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 to exude all of that out and like feel it and turn it into something beautiful. Well, I think, you know, when we look at what SA is coming from South, of, <laughs> South, from the South Tower. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we go there, it's kind of like we're taking the blues we're taking it with us and then they get it and they put us in this oh you just so beautiful though we want you back and get and they turn the blues into something more beautiful you know yeah it's something you're like man you know this feels familiar because i know what you've been through yeah but you don't really know what i've been through and so let me sit down and talk to you about it and, and vice versa so i think i think it's just so appropriate that you're southern and there's so many southerners in america right. Uh, if you look at all the people Mark's talking to and you talk to, a lot of them, a great majority of them are the Southern. South. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but you know what? I like that analogy. I'm going to take it another step further because the blues comes from Mississippi. 
New Orleans created jazz, right? Yeah. And these are like uh, kissing cousins. Kissing cousins. You know I mean? Right. I got in trouble for using that analogy one time. Huh? <laughs> I said that to a Yankee one time and the doctor's like, well, oh, yeah, yeah, Louisiana and Mississippi are kissing cousins. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you're not Southern. <laughs> it's not inappropriate to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, yeah, uh, so yeah, so so what I feel like, and you know, jazz is pretty big in SA or definitely mm-hmm. Hugh Massacana, yeah. uh, Miriam, Miriam mm-hmm. Makiba. So uh um, Jonathan Butler, man. Jonathan <laughs> Butler from K Town. You know, I I've did seen, not know that. You know, I've seen Jonathan Butler four times. Go to my Facebook and uh-huh. you will see where I got invited to get a front row seat right here, right here in Dallas. Uh, at the what's a big college here, the SMU, where he performs okay. every year at the jazz fest. You know, do a jazz like link. You have they have the the performances all around the city in Fort Worth, the Riverfront Jazz, okay. and they do it at the colleges. Jonathan Butler's from Cape Town. You remember? You probably I'm a little older than you, but not that much. But you remember when he first came out in the '80s with Sarah Sarah? That was the yeah. '80s, '87. Yeah. I was liking his music then, but he's still huge in the jazz scene in the country. And he brings all the big jazz, his, uh, his, uh, I'm about to say physicians, all the <laughs> jazz performers yeah. back to SA every year for the jazz festival, the International Jazz Festival is in Cape Town every year. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. I, I heard uh, the guy Damon Baptiste, maybe oh, yeah. uh, something, he wanted to Baptiste. But, but, yeah. but my analogy that I was going to make is that when you look at jazz, there is that impromptu nature mm-hmm. where you play your melody, I play mine, but it all fits yeah. into this framework. And that's what I think it, 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 it happens when we get to essay. It's like, we may be playing a slightly different melody, but it makes a fire song. It makes kind of blue. You know what I'm saying? It makes Charlie uh, Charlie Parker, you know, uh, you know, it makes a little Thelonious uh, song. Yeah, yeah, it makes it <laughs> around midnight. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's oh, that's man. the beauty of, of this. Man, where's Doc? Doc was supposed to be here. I mean, he's supposed to be at nine. You know so what? Yeah. Doc gets on me because you. whenever you do a video, or you go live, he says, you never talk when Assad does a video. He said, you never talk. I would, you know, I get to know him more and more every time we see each other, but every time we talk. And uh, we talk, you know, maybe once or twice a week, but um, I can almost tell he's thinking like, if I get on that video, Josh is not going to talk. Oh, no. He probably, I, I think he's going to come in at, at, at nine o'clock and start talking <laughs> about eating them uh, lamb chops or whatever yeah, it was yeah, he was yeah, eating. Yeah. Well, I'm going to mess well, he with waited him. on purpose. He waited on purpose to see what I going to say that because you know he'll say Joshua oh, they're acting all shy won't say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, man, I I think say man, it's it's it. People like yourself and and Doc, you guys have provided uh, such inspiration to my wife and myself because at times I can question my own sanity, and, and as as a mental health professional. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, am I being impulsive? And I mean, I know four years is not really impulsive. Like it's 2019, we started planning. So it's not really yeah, impulsive, yeah. but it's like, am I doing this right? So when I when I talk to you guys, when I talk to uh, JB and uh, even Asha or Ashley, people who's, who've gotten up and and made or, or, or planning to make the move, who are saying to the, who are saying the same thing that we're saying, it's, we gotta get there. We wanna yeah. be there. We gotta leave the US. It's a better opportunity and whatever have you. So when I when I get to talk to you guys, it just recharges my battery and it kind of refocuses and um, recalibrates where where I need to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, because yesterday I can have a, a moment of honesty and clarity. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, when I had to sweep the dust out of my house yeah. for the last time, man, that was rough. It, yeah. I didn't. It was. A, it was an emotional reaction that I didn't a- expect. Um, I looked at my wife. I was fine really at first until I saw my wife tearing up. And, I, and after that, you know, it was waterworks. I was like, Lord, this is the house that we raised our. And so it's not so much about leaving the U.S. or leaving. Yeah. Uh, it's emotional attachment. It's, it's yeah. an attachment to to this particular building, this structure, or whatever have you. But then my wife reminded me. She was like, "Boy, we out of buku debt." <laughs> 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 
They can have it. Doctor Adrian had to take take you take you to school for a minute, take you down the road, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doc, I mean, you say, I mean, you know, you know, when when you're called, and for people who are listening, to this, I'm not saying being called to the ministry. <laughs> I was, oh, 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 you know, whenever you you have a calling or you're called. That's a conversation between you and your God. It's not a conference call, you know. That's that's nice. what trips me out with, you know, individuals who try to come at you and question all your motives and what you're doing and why you're doing it. I'm like, hey, you know, whatever God or whoever your God is or whatever puts in mm-hmm. my heart, right? You know, that's a conversation I'm having with Him. Mm-hmm. Now, Am I going to talk to my mother and father about it? Sure I am. There's no way. Right. I wouldn't. You're right. Am I going to have to say to my wife, sweetheart, you know, this is what I'm feeling we should do and get her blessed on? Sure I am. But the call is still the call to you. It went to your heart first, right. your mind. Mm-hmm. And then you got to, you know, whatever you do with that. And uh, I don't think there's anything about what you're doing is impulsive. Everybody had an idea, right? Uh, whatever that idea was, they had to, you know, prepare, pair, you know, <laughs> have a lot of sit down discussions. But I think that the move that you're making, everything you said, you know, that's happening in the world, there are some, there are some unbelievable signs. I'm just surprised that more black people aren't ain't paying attention. And I think they are. I think they are. And we'll we'll talk about this another time because I know you and I talk about this forever. I think they are paying attention. But what I've noticed in the in in just my immediate friends, because I a lot of my friends uh, that I grew up with do well enough to take a trip to Africa once a year. Yeah. Uh, I just think that it's just so many things tying us here that yeah. it's hard for us to really. <sighs> <laughs> yeah we'll talk about this another time but you know where i'm going two things i want to jump in and say you mentioned calling and i and mm-hmm. when, when when you said that I, I i i thought back to the narrative of jeremiah in the bible mm-hmm. and who attempted to run from his calling mm-hmm. and he said that in that running in that mm-hmm. running the calling got so strong he said it felt like fire fire Shut up in his bones. <laughs> Man, could you imagine the feeling of flames in your bones? He, knew. That was so strong. Uh, he, he thought he had shingles back then, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what this feels like. It, when, when you come back into the U.S. and you like, dog, I got to be here. I mean, we took a trip in March just because. We had no reason really to go there. We made up some idea or we would go look for a place. We just yeah. needed to get that fire yeah. from, from being shut up in our bones. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that uh, to, to, to the second part of your, your comment, that a lot of people are trapped here because of the debt, the D-E-B-T, mm-hmm. the debt. They own a mortgage and they got 20 years on that mortgage and they know they can't sell for whatever. They, all, they got car loans, they got student loans. So mm-hmm. this debt, so as we are in this process, as hard as it may be, it's mm-hmm. like, I've just liberated myself from one of debt, but it also liberates me from location. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have a, um, a job that allows me to work virtually. So that's a plus. Uh, but with that, so with that being said, I can go anywhere in the world. I can move anywhere around. And there's, there's a lot of liberation that comes with that. I think mm-hmm. that what our people, what most people are, are the hardest thing that they're trying to figure out is how, how am I going to feed myself? Mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. sell a house. I can sell these cars. How am I going to feed myself in order to go to X, Y, and Z, in order to go to this place? And uh, I just think that requires them to go there several times. And the engine, in, in genius nature, the engine, engine exactly. I, I forgot the word I was talking about. You got it. Ingenuity. Yeah, that's right. Ingenuity. You're way um, smarter than me. I know you got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, brother. You're the one, brother. You were smarter than the medical sales, sure. <laughs> the only people who are smarter than the medical sales are the pharmaceutical sales, because hey, <laughs> everybody doing drugs. <laughs> uh, yeah. <He's> <laughs> the good and the bad. <laughs> yeah. Boy. Oh my goodness. But yeah, so I think yeah. that that is it. The ingenuity will kick in and we'll figure out some stuff. I was looking around, man. I was watching a um a YouTube video of a guy who uh he opened up like a a, a boot boutique type hotel. And I was like, yeah, oh yeah. man, 
That's something I could do. That old real South Africa young guy, young guy from. Well, I saw that one too, but no, yeah, this yeah, was yeah, a guy yeah. on. Uh, this I think the, the the guy he's a Nigerian brother, but he all he's always okay. in SA or whatever. Had yeah. the YouTube, I forget his name, um, but uh, he's always in SA. But he was interviewing a guy in Cape Town who opened mm-hmm. up a, uh, a a boutique hotel, and I was like, man, that's something that I could do because I ran an Airbnb for so long. I'm like, yes. I, I think I understand and that. It uh, it. Right. <laughs> I think this is JB right here. Yeah, yeah, bring him on in. Bring him on in like you bring me, me in. Let me see. Let me jump on. He should be jumping in now. Yeah, but, it's uh, needed. That's good. I'm glad you mentioned that. It's needed. You have such a. You and I both have a investor background. I like Mississippi, man. And, you know, I probably sold over 97 properties between 2003 and 2008. Uh, wow. just was flipping them like crazy. I wasn't holding on to them. And that was probably one of the <laughs> mistakes of flipping. Uh, and um, it's because some you wanted to hold on to. But now that I realize that, that I'm older now and I think about, hey, Joburg or Cape Town would be a good place to hold on. Yeah. Some good properties and really spruce them up, really make them just showcase nice. Because when people come there, they want that home feeling place to stay they don't really want to be in a box you know right and, right um, but you know sometimes the box is affordable it's easier it's more efficient but if you can present that 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 experience type of yeah. <laughs> place for them to stay yeah. man you're winning because both both sides win you're giving them true essay you know comfort uh, so I, I think that that part in real estate though is great if you can I- offer that I was thinking as I as I was reading through some of your text messages and looking at uh, D- Dane Fern. Dane mm-hmm. Fern is a very nice place, but some of the houses that I I have seen were uh, they were outdated. They were, I think it was built in 1990, so mm-hmm. it had it it reminds you of the 1990 feel. These are beautiful structures, beautiful homes. Yeah, it just mm-hmm. needs a little updating, and I'm thinking like that is the type of investment that you could make to like start you can take the, the shell of the house and mm-hmm. really put and they go on sale and for anybody thinking that doc is like oh but you get in it too deep let me tell you something we looked at one in dane fern golf estates yeah and that thing was a nice price which was two or three million below two let me let me let me stop two or three million ran below what everybody else was asking about was large and when i told the realtor this is a steal she said yeah but it's gonna need a lot of updates but the, I was still willing to buy it. And do you know that the lady who owned the house said, no, I'm going to take it off the market today and fix it up. And then, so, turn, yeah. and then turn it. So when I say that they know the product that they have, yeah, <laughs> it's great that if you are somebody like-minded, like Doc here who wants to take a property and bring it up today and make it a beautiful modern structure, there is profit in that. And people in SA are already doing that because they realize the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> and, and what you and what you could do is you can get with the these these um uh uh what do you call them um uh feng shui geniuses, these yes. uh, interior design geniuses <laughs> interior in SA. They're everywhere. And just just bring them in and be like, hey man. Tell me what you, you do. Tell me what to do. You don't even have to tell them. They they already know what to do. You just tell yeah. them. Here's the color palette I want. Here's the here's the scheme I want. Yeah. They, I met about four on IG. I probably have four on IG that I that I follow. And uh, mm-hmm. when you just look at some of the work that some of these young people have done, it's just amazing what they've yeah. done. And I seen brothers. Yeah. It's like brothers who are in the, into interior design. You know, that's not a. Uh, yeah. Hey. I ain't never met a man in this. I'm man enough to say if you want to go into that together, you know, we can do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about brothers who actually do interior design. I yeah, never, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you don't really see a uh, 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 American black men. <laughs> no, not no. unless you're watching HGTV, and I would say that they don't even show that now, but they did back in the maybe ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, but they move more into, you know, total reconstruction. But that is something that is lacking. And I bet that, you know, guys are particularly in America are very good with designer uh, in, in this country. I'm, I, I'm sure it's the same way as say, I don't know because I, I've never really checked. So somebody who sees this, please check me if I'm wrong or right. 
But I know in America, a lot of men like designer. Look at Kanye West. Who would ever thought he'd be right. top of Jordan and Jay-Z and money this soon? But it's mostly because of his fashion. Right, right. So uh, Black men are truly very gifted in the area of fashion. But like you said, it's the popularity of it uh, for Black men is not so, you know, known. We got JB jumping on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Like he's jumping on from his iPhone and not his. Yeah, uh, yeah, he got connecting problems over there. <laughs> All right, there he is. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. Hold on, what is this thing? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta flip the, you gotta flip the camera on, brother. People don't know that Doctor Doctor J B and I've been in two con. Well, I've been in three continents today. He's been in two, so you know we're a little jet lag. But when every time I get on, get on with a side, you know I get I get a little amped up because he's amped up. <laughs> Man, and, I, and I'm on uh, uh, medicine right now to keep myself uh, from doing all this coughing, and I'm still coughing, but it's all right. We gonna get right, there you go. There you yeah, go with his S.A. bucket hat on. <laughs> Woo! Aside, he was so fly. He was so fly. S.A. the whole thing. That boy took a, a picture, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had man, a new outfit on, man. Adrian said y'all going to do it at 930. Oh, oh man. man. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Hold on. Um, I thought I was going out to eat. We did go out to eat. And I was like, man, uh, this place is going to take a long time. But it's been storming in uh, New Orleans all day. So we walked yeah. in and the restaurant was empty, uh, basically empty. So we walked in, sat down, ate, and came back. And uh, so I was like, and then I saw Josh jumped on. I was like, I don't want to miss him. So, I, you know, you get a notification on your phone. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, he's on. And then I tried to hit, hit you up with a uh, text message. So I apologize for the, the, the time. Confusion, yeah. but me and Josh been sitting up here building for about an hour, man, talking about his trip. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, I told him, I, Dr. JV, I told Dr. Side, I said, uh, Dr. JV didn't get on on purpose because I don't ever say nothing when we do these meetings. So he probably like, I'm going to see if he going to talk about it. Man, so man, we, we, we didn't explore Josh's trip. So you just got back today, too. Right, yeah. I don't have yeah. to introduce you. Uh, 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 uh we live, icon, the DJ, yeah, we live, yeah, icon. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> so, so, um, you were just back this today, you were over there for the last what eight days, nine days, nine days, yeah, nine days, man. So, <laughs> tell me about your experiences that for these last nine days, man, and, and you know, going back. Let me first question I want to know. Did it feel like you were going home? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was cool. Um, um, had opportunity to you know see people that we met the last time, and um, you know same old same old. We had an opportunity to eat at some different restaurants and and basically talk and meet with people that um that's already there. You know, like Asha and Greg. Um, I got yeah, Ashley. We met with uh, Ashley in Africa. Mm -hmm. We uh, I, I I had to sit down with uh with Easy. Uh, yeah. I think the second day I was there. So yeah, it was good. It was yeah. Real good. Yeah. Yeah, man. So so what y'all do this time? I mean, I know I saw the pictures and stuff. You know, I was trying. To... Yeah, we uh, actually went safari this time. Yeah, we went what? on on safari. Went to the Lion uh Sanctuary. Okay. And so, so we had a good time there. Yeah, had a great time. And it was a perfect type of safari for us because some safaris, you have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and drive all day and be there all day and come back late at night. But this one was about, about 40, 45 minute drive to the place. We stayed about two hours and then we came on back. Well, y'all, so, so y'all went to Heart of Heart, Heart V Sport? Heart yeah. I can't yeah. pronounce it in <laughs> the South <laughs> African family. Just, just call it Hardy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's called Hardy. Yeah. So yeah, did did y'all uh y'all check y'all y'all think so the lion one, isn't it that next to the elephant one too? Yes, yes, it is. Elephant sanctuary. Y'all y'all didn't check out the elephant sanctuary? No, well, because of uh I think it was an age restriction, uh, because oh. Josh brought his child, they wouldn't allow us to see the elephants, but we was able to see the, the hyenas, uh, panthers, cheetahs, lions, uh, water, stuff like that. Hey, 
Uh, wow. Now, I saw y'all, they was all in cages though, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, Josh just sent me a video of the lion, of the lion park. I'm gonna check it out right now. Let me see her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what? Tell that's Patricia. The lions were in cages. No, they wasn't. They don't look like no cage around here. Some of them were like when we was posing, they were. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, that, were, they were like they yeah. were like fenced in. Yeah, but now, yeah. when we first went out to the park, when we drove up to them, we drove up to them. They weren't in cages. They were like out sitting, you know, in, like under a tree. But, yeah. But where we could get out of the car, they had them caged. Uh, so it's sectioned off. It's like the whole park area is sectioned off where they roam free. And then there's another section that you go into a, a gate that closes behind you where there are actually in fences that you can go up to the fence. But uh, yeah, one time they came up to the window, remember, Doc? Uh, because Kennedy was making that noise, the guy in the window. <laughs> yeah, really yeah. the, I sent you that, Doc. You're going to love to see Kennedy trying to uh, improvise. <laughs> but look, my question is, did they have a gun on the thing? Because if the if the if no. the so what happened if the lion decided he he hungry? Ah, uh, shoot! They they basically I, they pretty much domesticated sort of because they don't really hunt. <laughs> they not them real lions. They had to get out there and hunt. They get fed twice a twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Yeah, and so during the rest of the time they just chilling. They just laying around sleep. Yeah, when we so went to, not, huh? I was saying when we went to Kruger, we saw them and we rode right up on them. But we were the truck sits up so high, I I felt I was like, I, but then I realized that earlier that day I saw um, it wasn't a cheetah, whatever it was, whatever kind of big cat it was. He took a a, a gazelle up into the tree. He climbed up into the tree with the gazelle. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, if he could climb into that tree, he sure can climb on this little truck. Yeah. So oh, I don't yeah. know, I don't yeah. know how safe I, I convinced myself we were. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, I was caged in, but they had open windows there. Is what I'm oh, saying. No, like, I that open. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because I could stick my hand and everything out the window because I did that to take a picture with the lion. You know, my name means lion, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I got I got to thank for lions, but uh, yeah. I not 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 to get close to them. <laughs> <laughs> so man, JB, tell me about the food, man. What y'all what y'all what y'all got to eat out there that was good this time? I saw y'all went back to Cream. Yeah, went back to Cream. We went to a Grill House. We went to a Hussar restaurant, which is in uh, Monte Casino. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocco Mamas. Shoot, a couple man, other restaurants. Where huh? was that place where they was pouring the fire on the sushi? Oh, that was Firehouse Grill. Fire. Wow. That, yeah. that's, that's almost salt bay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's almost salt bay. Yeah. yeah. So what, what grill? That's that's around the corner from Rosebank, ain't it? What, Firehouse? Is that the same? No, maybe I think it's Grill House. We were out oh, of the in Mall of, Mall of America, weren't we? Well, Grill House? Which one did we go to that was the Mall of America, but right before we went to Blue Mall Diamond. of Africa. Mall of Africa. Yeah, I keep saying, the, I, I, I know the driver keeps saying, you're in Africa. Uh, when we went, that's when we went out to the Mall of Africa the second time, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Man, so all the, it just seemed like the all the different restaurants we went to are just kind of all coming together. Yeah. yeah. So trying to, well, you know, we, we, we I can say this, I didn't have a, a bad meal. The whole time, so we was we did we eat, did eat well while we was in Africa. Max. Yeah, I, I was telling Josh earlier that y'all did naturally what the South Africans do, and that's commune with a whole lot of people to eat. Yeah. you know your family, Josh, and Josh reminded me he brought some people with him. Then it was the Ash and the Gregs. It's like it's like you fell into the culture automatically. Mm -hmm. You know when yeah. I when I'm sitting at um like Proud Marys or whatever have you for lunch. Or something, and you see all these on lunch and you see like all these tables of eight, nine people together, yeah. and it's like something normal, you know. Mm -hmm. Like so, you guys kind of fell in and in, into that. So, so um, what's the plans, man? What 
I already know, Doc, you can probably purchase your ticket for uh for 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 the next two months or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> when when, when yeah. you going back? Um well uh, uh we have to talk about it, but uh, we were thinking about trying to, you know, go back towards the end of August or the beginning of September. Mm-hmm. So um, but we just had to talk about it. But by that time, you'll be there already, right? God willing, man. I'm waiting on my visas, man. Uh, so as the visas come, I'm out. Okay. So, uh, they told us four to six weeks. This week, Wednesday, made the fifth week. So next week, Wednesday, will be the sixth week. The sixth week. So hopefully Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, I get the visas in the mail. After that, we will, um, I mean, you know, I'm homeless at this point, right? You know, I ain't got no house. Yeah, I'm homeless. So, uh, so um, uh, we were supposed to go into closing the day. They had an emergency, so we're going to closing on Tuesday. So anyway, once we get the, the visas in hand, I'm going to take all these bags because, I mean, I got maybe 10 bags of uh, luggage by my mom's house and then in the back of my wife's car we got, we got you know we straight vagabonds out here you know uh, mm-hmm. but once I'm gonna take as many bags as I can to jump on a plane and go over there and find me a place to stay uh, we, we, had, we have found a place in Dane Fern and the lady kind of uh, I felt she uh, like we could prove four, five, six times the rent, right? Mm-hmm. For the place. And she was asking for a three-month deposit. And I'm like, I just showed you mm-hmm. like a three-month deposit. Like, I'm like, this ain't even a furnished place. Yeah. I'm like, and I just showed you, you know, what, what we earn in order to, to, so I felt like, uh, I kind of felt leery about that. Mm-hmm. I, felt, I felt a little disrespected, really. Like, yeah. I don't, you know, I was like, ah, look, so let me, I was both- like, State agent, or uh, this was just a direct. I, we were on property twenty four, looking for rentals, and I saw the place. It was at a nice thirty. It was thirty five thousand rand. It was mm-hmm. in Dane Fern. I like Dane Fern, uh, mm-hmm. the golf estate, and um, you know, um, the lady did a WhatsApp walkthrough with us. So we walked through the place, and it looks nice inside. And that's what I was telling Josh. It needs a little updating. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I know I would go in there, and but it's not mine, so I'm not going to update it. But I'm like, you can see like where it can step out of the the, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and maybe mm-hmm. bring it into Blackish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> just needs a little it. updating there. Oh, but yeah. uh, so I said, um, but I was willing to to deal with it because I like the golf, like Dame Fern. I like the fact that I could go on these walking trails and. Yeah. Uh, go to go to the golf club and get something to eat and relax, whatever have you. But once that happened, I was like, I'm gonna just wait till I get there. Please do, mm-hmm. and I'm so I can see mm-hmm. what I'm doing and see what I'm getting myself into, as yeah. well as I I'm I'm really hooked on Dave Fern, but I shouldn't be because mm-hmm. there are so many other estates that are just as nice and some of them that are more new. So when Josh told me about that house that he's interested in, which is in another, I don't want to put his business out there, but which is in another, a very nice place. I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I really just need to be there to see what I need to see, uh, you know, before I start sending money across seas and making these yeah. kind of commitments or whatever have you. Yeah. So basically, uh, just saying the next couple of weeks, uh, I guess, you, are you going to go by yourself? Are you and Adrian going to go first and find a place? And then yeah, a, a, come back Adrian's, and yeah, Adrian's going to come come with me the first time. And I'm uh, not sure I'm coming back is what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to leave. She's going to have to come back, get the kids. And, um, and then she has somewhere to be in August. So I may be there from June just by myself until they arrive in, in August or whatever have you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm saying that uh, J, JB, uh, but you know, I'm scary. <laughs> I, don't, I, ain't been with, I ain't never been without my wife since we've been married. You know what I'm I saying? Know, right? it, it, yeah, it, 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 it. That, that sound good. I be talking that like I'm a gangster. That's scary. I'm gonna just be there for a couple. Man, I'll be like, I gotta jump on this plane. <laughs> like JB, he get to talking in the bathroom. It's so old. <laughs> he hear the echo. He like. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm talking brown that gangster bear stuff. To take with you. Huh? I said, you're going to get your brown teddy bear to take with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. something, bro. I don't know, but I got to I'm saying that, but it, you know, that, that plane ticket is real too, though. That back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Know, so you got to kind of think. And yeah. then I was supposed to be uh, in June, which is this month. I need to, I told the, uh, the, the university, the center, that I would be there. So, and I need to start getting to work on some of this stuff. I mean, it's been months now, right? So, uh, so yeah, like going back and forth is kind of like, it doesn't really make sense. But then again, you know, I don't know to be, to be away from the family for all that time. I could do without the kids, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just me. I thought it was just me. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I want I want to make sure I'm around my wife or whatever happened. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, but we're definitely God willing, if nothing yeah. crazy happens, you know, we'll definitely be there in August or whatever have you. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and I'm looking forward to having the big dinners and stuff. Like I was jealous, I ain't gonna lie. I was I was sitting up there jealous every every picture you post, and it's like one day you just did a photo dump. And, and every, I know, right? Every hour there was a new picture popping up, and I'm sitting up there, oh, uh, man, look at them, man. Yeah, uh, man. it was oh, it was really an next. exciting time to be there with Doc uh, because we had missed the first opportunity to do that. So, yeah. I mean, every time, I mean, he really every time I text him or call him, he was out doing something, playing pool or doing something. I was like, man, he is really enjoying himself. And I tried to keep up, Doc. But man, you know, I had to push Kenny through that, through that mall okay. and everything. Come on down, get my steps in. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, we had I like to the went to the uh went to that uh that same pool hall that we we met up the last time. Mm -hmm. so, oh yeah. Yeah, me and my son and uh Greg. And uh so but we went in the daytime, we didn't go at night. Man, yeah. look. Look, man, that, that's that's awesome that y'all got to, you know, that's like doing everyday stuff. It's, it, you, you're broken away from the, the touristy stuff. Touristy stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I was about to say, I like the fact that Asha is really like the unofficial welcoming committee yes. for, you know, for, for African-Americans visiting. Like a lot of people know who she is and then she's there. She's being very, mm -hmm. hey, let's, I, you know, meet for lunch Beautiful or whatever home. happens. Yeah, beautiful soul, man. Just vibrant. Yeah, like that. You can tell she ain't got that stress on her no more. She ain't in America. She retired. And I say she, she doing and good. Yeah. My wife, when she met Asha, of course, you know Nicole watches her videos when she puts them out. But she's like Asha is late. When she when she came out her outfit on, she's like, oh, Miss Asha is super cute, super sharp. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, got us got that style and pizzazz, yeah. man. You know, you can tell she in Atlanta. You know, she's coming from Atlanta, so she yeah. really knows how to you know rag. I was checking her out. Would you know? Yeah. I also think you could see the um, as we was talking about with Ashley in Africa, you could see a vibe mm -hmm. with with mm -hmm. with uh, Asha. She is. On the continent, she's not that weight that we all talk about. That weight yeah. that the judge talked about. That yeah, she's it's not on her. Yeah, she's yeah. she's 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 free for lack of a better term, or she's mm -hmm. emotionally liberated, uh, stabilized. Really, it's not even liberated. It's it's stabilization when we talk about the 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 stuff that's going on with Black America, going from you know right. like ten people getting killed to nineteen children to mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. crazy stuff that we're dealing with just in mm -hmm. this country. You know, we're she's finally stabilized to where she can actually uh, investigate and interrogate her own emotions, and looks like she's found mm -hmm. a happy place. And uh, God willing, I'll be there with her in a in a, in a few weeks to get to mm -hmm. my happy place. You dig? So yeah, but she she's definitely prospering there. Yeah. And you know, like I said before, South Africa is not perfect. It has to share crime and mm -hmm. and then all that kind of stuff. But I just don't think it's on the level as United States. And when we asked the question, you know, do you want to go back to America? And she said, no, yeah. she don't even like to visit. She had to go yeah. back for business uh, last week or week before last. And she dreaded going. She wanted mm -hmm. to get back to South Africa. So that says a lot. Especially yes. being a single female. Mm -hmm. So um you but know, again, I'm, that's yeah. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. In, brother. Huh? So I'm sorry, go ahead. 
No, I was saying uh, she's she just doing well. I mean, every time we see her, she just in a great mood and she just seems like she just wakes up and decide what she want to do for the day and she just live her day. So, you know, the, the, when we have lunch, she said she told us that, you know, what we're doing right now, this is just going to be a, a everyday thing. It's not mm -hmm. like a vacation thing. You basically live in a vacation almost every day. That's the way okay. she kind of put it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did learn one thing, you know, if you want to pay for the meal, you got to sit towards the end of the table. <laughs> <laughs> because every time for some reason I ended up towards the middle or the other side of the table and and before I know it somebody else already paid for the meal so I uh. should pay our last meal because she was sitting towards the end of the table <laughs> so, but in America it's different they throw the bill in the middle of the table and people look at it like it got the cooties on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, hold on yeah. one second uh -oh. I'm sorry, man, prayer time. But yeah, man. Uh, you got 14 people eating now. 14 people eating in the United States. And we was eating good. We weren't even blown the sound. We were eating good. Eating yeah. like top quality stuff. So, so that bill would have been probably, you know, Two, probably 1400 Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah <laughs> but 14 people eating and, and it only cost $200. Oh, yeah, I'll take, take that bill. Yeah. You know, I'll take that one. Yeah, you look like you balling straight up. Yeah, man, ain't not, not to. I fed them all. You hear me? <laughs> hey, I do that in America. No, uh, indeed. You're trying I'm to break that check up 14 ways. <laughs> look, look, can you split this? I had I had the lamb chops and the, and the water. Look, man. <laughs> look, I'm like, Doc, man. I told Doc, I said, man, I ain't got time to be going through no bills. I was, I was like, man, get that check. Let's go. We got yeah. somewhere to be. <laughs> Man, yeah. but you know what? I what I learned about about having like African partners is that um, paying for the check is like something honorable. Like yeah. my yeah. Not, my Ghanaian partners do it, my uh, Eritrean partners do it. Like when we out to eat, they wanna, you know, the bill come. Everybody trying to grab for it or whatever mm -hmm. have you. And now it made me that way. Like ah, right, let me try to grab and and you know pay for it or whatever have you. I got one partner, he'll get so slick, he'll get up, act like he go in the bathroom and go and pay for it and come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we yeah, be like, yeah, man, yeah. we gonna bring a ticket. Oh, I, I took care of it, I took care of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I think it's, it's it's a different, you know, it's just, it's a different way because America has taught us to be so individualistic. So me, mm -hmm. me, 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 I'm gonna exactly. take care of me and mine or whatever have you and not, um, and not, see the whole family structure or extended family whatever have you. Yeah. It was just so much love. And I, I just got to send a shout out to everybody who was at that table uh, who sent my wife a happy birthday and sang they sang happy birthday. I mean that was probably one of the what I've seen my wife just laugh and have such a great time on her birthday. That was, that was probably one of the happiest birthdays I can say. Maybe she'll tell you different but I was just looking at her and <laughs> it's, it's Greg got everybody to sing the Stevie Wonder rendition of Happy Birthday <laughs> to her in the restaurant. Yeah. That was just amazing, man. I, and uh, I just, I really thank everybody for coming. It was, I mean, we had a packed room, 13 people in that room, man. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that, that, you, that's... you go all the way to South Africa and you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to have my birthday with my, my family. And yeah. here you got, you know. You I, know. I, I think that's the beauty of it. This beauty of this whole YouTube thing and has brought has has brought so many people together that mm -hmm. you already have a network mm -hmm. in South Africa. It's not like, oh, when I get there, I don't know anybody. When you get there, you know enough people to to actually build be that okay. Way. Yeah. Anybody listening to the side right now, you will be okay if you go. I'm telling you, you will be okay. I haven't been as much as he had. Don't know nearly as many people as Dr. Asai and Dr. JB, but if you talk to them, you're going to know them <laughs> because they're going to make sure they put you in touch with some great people. Right. And that's the thing, too, when you go out to eat and stuff and you uh, frequent uh, the restaurant, they, they tend to remember you. So, mm -hmm. like, when I go to Lima's, they know me over there. Mm -hmm. You know, the place where the uh, DJ, yeah, they know me over there. The manager mm -hmm. knows the, uh, the manager of, of the pool hall know who I am and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, what? Yeah, in the bowling alley. Yeah, the bowling alley. Yeah. So that's where the we go. Huh? The bowling alley was in Rosebank? 
No, the one that's in Monte Casino. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've been there so many times, and they they get excited when we walk in. Oh, it's Jane. Yeah. Oh, Regal. Regal. Yeah, because yeah, so we, <laughs> we, t- we try to make sure that we take care of the people when, we, when we're when we there. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of times, you know, people, you know, the, those tips, a lot of people, you know, really look forward to those tips and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I guess they, they used to people just coming in, getting their food and not tipping or tipping very little. But, you know, we try to tip, you know, big or adequate. And they tend to remember that. Yeah. And so yeah. each, time, each time we come back, we, we end up meeting even more and more people. So our circle of influence and has gotten even bigger each time we come. And I, I said that the last time I've met more people, met more genuine people in the past three months than I have in my past three years. Mm-hmm. And these people are yeah, still contacting us. We, we, I'm on three or four different WhatsApp groups and my phone just buzz all day, all night because everybody right. checks the stuff. E- mm-hmm. Easy going to send a, a WhatsApp every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Easy going to send a WhatsApp. And the thing about it is, I'm a text, you know, WhatsApp is not that big in the U.S. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, I don't even, like my notifications for WhatsApp, I don't even know how that stuff pop up or when it pops up. So every once in a while, I just got to go specifically to WhatsApp and check and see mm-hmm. what's going on or whatever have you. But Easy definitely going to send, and I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. He's definitely going to send something. He be sending me Farrakhan videos. I said, man, Easy, what you know about <laughs> But you know, I'm in a group where you just ask a question like, oh, where the best place to go get something to eat or the best place to go dancing or whatever. You put that question out there, boom, you'll get 10 different answers. Mm-hmm. And then they just start a whole new thread. So they t- they talk about everything from gas prices to the hottest club to politics, whatever. It's just an ongoing you know, conversation. So, we, you know, we've been enjoying that. You know, it keeps us, it's almost like we're still there because they, they're keeping us abreast of what's going on. So, yeah. J- Doc, how did your children enjoy it this time? And were they looking forward to going back when they when they, when they got on the plane? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, that's an ongoing process there. I mean, they had a good time, you know, but still, you know, they, they, they haven't embraced uh, South Africa, like we have yet, but you know, yeah, but well, they did okay, they did fine. All right, okay, cool. yeah, uh-huh. I'm sure, I'm sure that the more they go, are you cool? I mean, you gotta, do, yeah. you gotta let them because you, you gotta what you got, 23 year old, you said, yes, yeah, 22 and a, a 18 year old, you gotta and let them my, go to the club, yeah, you gotta find them a club to go to, <laughs> yeah, well, and then, that's exactly and, what I told him. Yeah, <laughs> to do that and and you know some of the people that they were supposed to have hung out with they was unavailable and you know our trip was kind of short because you know a lot of times they was like well we thought you were gonna be there you know two three weeks but you uh, know we was there really a l- little over a week and so it just they just didn't have the time to to, to hook up with people their age yeah. uh, I, but we can tell that like when they do like we uh they met uh uh raja who is uh June's son mm-hmm. and they lit up when he came in they was talking but the only problem was the very next day they end up going to Durban so we didn't see him anymore uh, so yeah. yeah so they was they was they were rolling June was, a, June was on a message a mission to see as much as she could on that trip right she cram everything in. In. and she actually stayed because I think Doc or so I mentioned that it was Nicole's birthday on Monday and she was leaving I think Saturday wasn't she, she was leaving Saturday because she got there on Wednesday Mm-hmm. And uh, she stayed so that we all could, you know, uh, get together that Monday. So they got on out of there and went to Durban. Yeah, but I think once they get a good, like, a good introduction to the nightlife, because sitting mm-hmm. around all y'all old people eating that I cream, that man, ain't nobody want to do that. Uh, uh, 22 and 18, <laughs> man. I told Doc, I said, yeah, I want to hang around with old boys. Yeah. yeah. That's old That's, people good time. We be having a good time sitting there talking and laughing. And you know, I but I know when I was 22, I I'd be like, nah, this ain't I it, Daddy. Them, I talked to them about a couple of places we were gonna try to get out. I think everybody was so tired that we got to the end of the trip. 
that we were going to try to go somewhere Wednesday, but I think they were just, they were like, I'm tired, man. But, yeah. Uh, so we'll plan the next time. Yeah. I think, um, well, for us, we don't, we don't go, we don't go out anywhere, but we did experience a little bit of Josie's nightlife a couple of times. One time we went to Mabinang and to a little club out there and it was lit. Like Mabinang itself was lit. You know what I'm saying? Just riding around. And the little place we went to, they had a, a, a sister in there. Let me tell you how much they are so familiar with African-American culture. It was almost like a karaoke, not even a karaoke, almost like an open mic poetry night or something like that, but with singing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, this chick sister got up there and she was singing uh, Jill Scott. Is okay. it the way? And I recorded uh-huh. that while she was doing it. Actually, in fact, I went live on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, it's nighttime there, but it's still like maybe four or five o'clock in the evening back in Louisiana. So mm-hmm. people were coming in and like, you know, where is that? I'm like, man, this is a South Africa. This ain't even, y'all <laughs> thinking it's down there in the city. Yeah, man, it's weird South Africa, man. It's like, man, it look like a good time or whatever. Have you like, yeah, bro? It they doing it, they doing it out here. So, oh yeah, they definitely pull up at a spot and have DJs out there if you know the right spots to go to. And uh, a lot of those places you can find on Instagram. You know, they'll pull up. You find where DJs are going to be playing and piano music and setting up. They set up in malls, restaurants, hair salons. They'll set up and people are just hanging. So, yeah. of course, we hadn't had the opportunity to do that because when we're there, it's limited time. So we're trying to accomplish so much, trying to find a place to stay, trying to, you know, trying to figure out where we're going to be, you know, you know, so it's it'll settle down. And uh, Doc, I was going to tell you this and I, uh, I know you're going to have to go back soon, but I don't know if we'll be able to do if we will be able to do a virtual closing. So we may be back in 90 days or less anyway, if we can't do it virtually. Damn, um, so we will be there, man. Yeah. We're gonna be there. We're gonna turn up and go throw a house party in your <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So as soon as I know some of that, I'm gonna see what uh also uh, uh, Doc JB. Maybe we can all run over there for that and all be together at one time. But my parents are coming in December when we come, you know, December we come every year. So they'll they'll come. I say, man, now that's a blessing to actually I, I wish I could convince this if it's one thing that I all my friends would have, forget them. I wish I could convince my parents to take that trip, man. But mm-hmm. age is working against them, you know, mm-hmm. that, that age factor and flying them long hours. But I wish I could it's, let it's them see the body. It. It's rough. Yeah. 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 It's rough. That's the hard part is that flight, you know? Yeah. 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 And I think uh, <laughs> the doctors told my mom for sure, you know, uh, no, no long trip, not long, car, no long car trips unless you get out every hour or so and walk around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the plane, but fellas, I hate to cut this conversation short. I'm, I drank this orange juice. And I'm, I'm trying to fight off. You know, this COVID thing is funny, man. It kind of come in little waves, just like it does yeah. with the, uh, with the actual surges of the numbers. It yeah. like I feel fine when I started this conversation. I was feeling good but now i could feel that wave coming back it's like yeah it's uh, upper it affects the upper respiratory so it, it, it cuts your breath short a little bit yeah exactly <laughs> that's what i'm feeling i'm starting to feel that shortness of the breath it's just telling me man go ahead and lay down or whatever yeah, yeah. get it get it yeah. together because i mean i was about 90 feeling about 90 percent now i'm starting to kind of feel like uh you maybe pushed yourself to the limits moving around and stuff I think if this week when I first tested, well, I tested positive yesterday or day before, whatever it was, but if uh, I would have had the opportunity to rest, we wasn't resting, man. I was sitting up there, you know, with a fever and 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 wheezing, moving the entire house and junk. Yeah. So I'm going to take this weekend to give me recoup. a little shut eye, yeah, recoup or yeah, whatever. Man. So, uh, man, look, I'm glad y'all brothers enjoyed y'all trip to uh, to SA, man. Like, 
I ain't gonna lie, as I was watching the things, I was like, man, they out there doing it. And I was <laughs> man, I was telling my wife, I'm jealous. She was like, we're about to be out there. They, you know, they gotta come back. I'm like, I don't care. They yeah. out there doing it. They having <laughs> a good why, time. That's why, I said it. I, that's why I said in my video, I knew you were jealous. Yeah, 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 yeah I was. I was, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I was jealous with his balls, man. What do you say? He's ready I, to kick it with his boys out there. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I saw everybody, <laughs> y'all sitting down, eating, having a good time. I said, yeah, I know yeah. they was laughing and cracking up at the uh, cream. I said, man, I'm I'm sitting up here sweeping floors and um, moving furniture. I said, man, it's, and I don't even have a passport to, to get up and go anywhere, <laughs> man. I'm trapped. Man, this is crazy, yeah. man. But I'm, I'm glad. When, hey, when, 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 when Brandy and Brandon coming back? Man, Brandy be back there at the end of the uh, at the end of June. She'll be okay. back there at the end of June. I don't know when Brandon. Brandon is practicing, uh, not practicing, training for a new fight. Mm -hmm. So, oh. uh, yeah. I just matter of fact, I just talked to him today. Uh, yeah, so he's starting to train for a new fight. Uh, so, but he's going to, I told him we're going to jump back on the channel, to, you know, um, next week so we could just run it, you know, talk about what's going mm -hmm. on or whatever have you, talking about his fights and mm -hmm. what he's what he got planned for SA. But Brandy is going back out. Um, she hooked up with, I said, you know, we brought Brandy out there. Not like we, we, we yeah. know her from school and she be like, yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. Now nah, she's booking her own flights, not even telling us. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I'll, I'll be out there when you get out there. I'm like, you know what I'm mean? like, <laughs> <Big girl. laughs> yeah, She don't need you, man. Yeah, she don't need us. She's like, yeah, I, I, yeah I'm going to be Spread out there. Spread those wings, get... Brandon. Spread those wings. <laughs> yeah, so she yeah. hooked well, up that with time you. That time we come, we plan on staying, you know, two, three weeks. We ain't doing no one week thing because it's just, it's hard to get something done. And, and yeah, set. man days because it takes at least a two days to get over the flight you know mm -hmm. and so we're gonna we're gonna stay a little longer the next time so we'll get a chance to see more people and do more things amen to i'm that. gonna tell you that i mean two weeks to me is real, like the week is cool just to just to, to scratch that itch mm -hmm. two weeks really uh gives you that uh that day-to-day -day when we went in december we had no plans other than to celebrate my wife's birthday which is my wife's mm -hmm. born on new year's eve to celebrate her birthday, but other than that, we want to see day to day. What's mm -hmm. it going to be like when we go day to day? Just whatever. So we we made no specific plans, uh, other than stuff that we made when we got there. We met with cool, cool people every day for those two weeks. It was like different people that we met mm -hmm. and different people wanted us to do X, Y, and Z. Keep in mind when we got out there, we thought we would meet. When we got out there, we didn't really know anybody. But right. We ended up meeting so many people in that two week period, it really gives you the opportunity to get that feel, you know, because that week goes by like that. You wake up and you already start, uh, the moment you let, drop down, you start that countdown. Those mm. two weeks, you know, is always that thought in your mind, oh, that's next week when I leave. Yeah. yeah. I leave <laughs> next week. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Versus like, yeah. I leave Saturday or Sunday. You know, yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's a different, it's a, just a different film, man. So I would advise, man, get that two weeks in, you know, 14, maybe even 21 days if you yeah. can. And uh, man, I'm getting short of breath. I got to go. All right, then, fellas. Man, God bless. Thank All you right. so much. I'll talk to you. Hey, go give your wife the, the greens. Give your wife the greens, Doc. And, and Josh, Josh, tell your wife happy birthday. Yes, sir. <laughs> Doc. I heard your wife took a uh, air piano class or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. She sold she, out. She, uh, <laughs> she got some African rhythm in her. <laughs> yeah. That's all, yeah. man. You get some rest, bro, man. We're going to talk to you. rocking a bucket hat, too. So, yeah, check that video. I think she, you, you ain't uploaded that video yet. Yeah, I uploaded it, man. She got the bucket hat getting down. So, yeah, she was doing good. Look at you. She was. She was getting off. Yeah. <laughs> you do it like that, that's something, huh? It's a, it's a, yeah, you're doing some stuff. I don't know. Yeah, we should shoot. Let's get some lemon tea, man. Drink, drink yeah. a lot of lemon tea, bro. I will, man. Y'all y'all have a good one, man. Family, we'll <laughs> upload this shortly. Thank y'all for tuning in. And uh, all right. yeah, I'll, I'll see y'all on the text message. I'll see y'all two on the text message. All right. Later.